Okay, so a store is having a 12-hour sale, and the total number of shoppers who enter the store, T hours after the sale begins, is modeled by the function S, which is given here, for T is between 0 and 12. So at time T equals 0, when the sale begins, there are no shoppers in the store. All right, so part A, what rate are shoppers entering the store three hours after the start of the sale? Okay, so that's pretty simple because if we're saying rate, we basically just take S prime of T at three. So S prime of three, so we find S prime of three. So we take the derivative of this function and evaluate it from when, um, when T equals three. So for this, we can use the um, calculus function in our calculator so we can go to numerical derivative at a point variable x value 3 first derivative yep and let's enter this correctly so 0.5 x to the fourth minus 16 x to the third plus 144 x squared I'm at 46. So we say that they're entering at a rate of 486 shoppers per hour. All right, part B, find the value of one third times the integral of S prime of T from six to nine and explain the meaning of this. Okay, so here, um, let's recognize first what the integral from six to nine of s prime of t is like. What does it equal? So let's just have the one third on the outside. One third times this. Now remember, when we integrate, we're basically taking the antiderivative. So we're taking, we're going to get the function that gives us this as its derivative. So Essentially, since we have s prime of t, we're going to go back and get s of t. So we're going to have s of t and we're going we're gonna to integrate or we're going to calculate that from 6 to 9. So we're going to get 1 third times s of 9 minus s of 6. Again, remember, because the antiderivative of s prime of t is the function that gives you this as the derivative. So the derivative of s of t is s prime of t. Now, um, forgetting about the one-third, let's think about what this means. Remember, s of t tells you how many shoppers have entered the store t hours after, after the sale began. So S of 9 tells you how many shoppers have entered the store 9 hours after it began. And S of 6 tells you how many shoppers have entered the store 6 hours after it began. So um, if we find their difference, S of 9 minus S of 6, it's basically telling you how many shoppers enter the store from hours 6 to 9. So from hours 6 to 9. Now if we calculate that, and I'll save the time, but you can plug that into your calculator, you would get 904.5. You would just again plug in 9 into this equation and plug in 3, I'm mean, plug in 6 in this equation and find their difference. Now um this tells you how many shoppers enter the store from the 6th to 9th hour. But if we divide it by three, it's basically telling you how many shoppers at, entered the store on average from those three hours. Because since there's three hours from six to nine, dividing this total by three is gonna give you like the average 
average number of shoppers that enter the store from that during that time period. So that would give us, when we divide that, be 301.5. Then we could say from hour six to nine, 301.5 shoppers entered the store Enter the store. Per hour on average. Okay, so part C. All right, the rate at which shoppers leave the store measured in shoppers per hour is modeled by the function L, which is given here, for T between 0 and 12. So according to this model, how many shoppers are in store at the end of the sale? So at time t equals 12. Okay, so um, this is um, deceivingly a little more complicated than it would appear. So um, let's recall that S of t tells you how many shoppers have entered the store. Now if L of t said how many shoppers left the store, then we could simply find this by taking S of t minus L of t. However, this tells you the rate at which shoppers leave the store. So you can simply do S of t minus L of t, but you can do something like similar. So let's make a, let's, let's, let's make a new function where N of t will give you the number of shoppers in the store at any time t. So what we're going to do is we're going to take S of t minus the integral from 0 to 12 of L of t. Now, so this, because doing this would tell you how many shoppers left the store from hours 0 to 12. So if we want to figure out um, n of 12, how many shoppers are in the store at the 12th hour and the sale, we basically take s of 12 and from it subtract the integral from 0 to 12 of l of t dt. So what we're going to do is use our calculator to figure this out. So. We're going to go to um, our calculus function here, and we're going to just figure out um, the numerical integral for L of t from 0 to 12. So we're going to have our endpoint 0 to 12, and here we're going to enter this function. So be careful I don't make a mistake, so negative AD plus So four zero zero divided by x squared. Oops, minus minus fourteen x plus fifty five. Three thousand two thirty two sixty point two nine. Now S of twelve, what I have to do is plug twelve into here, plug twelve into this function. And this when I do that we'll get 34, 5, 6, we're going to have 34, 5, 6 minus 
to 60.29831633. Doing the math. About one ninety five point seven. It says round an answer to the nearest whole number. That would be one hundred ninety six choppers. All right, and la the last part. Using the given models, find the time t of which the number of shoppers in the store is the greatest. Okay, so n of t is going to represent the number, the number of shoppers in the store. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to study n prime of t. n prime of t will then be s prime of t minus L of t, because remember when you integrate or when you differentiate an, an integral, when you differentiate an integral, basically cancels out the integral. So this becomes s prime of t minus L of t. Okay, and the idea is to figure out when n prime of t is equal to zero because then that tells you that S prime of T and L of T are equal. And we wanna see what's going on before N prime of T is zero and what's going on after. Essentially want this, um, essentially want that zero to be a maximum. We want, we want, it, to see, we want it to be basically um, decreasing afterwards and increasing beforewards. So um, we wanna find when is N prime of T equal to zero. So one way to do it, um, if you have a graphing calculator, which I recommend, is just to graph this. It's just to graph this function. So um, for that, we're going to go into here, and we're going to go to our graphing technology here. Actually, I already did. But let, me, um, let me just go back to kind of like We have a graph function and up here will be my function for s prime of t. So um, let's remember that s prime of t is the derivative of s of t. So um, let me write it out here. s prime of t, so we would take the derivative of this and that would be basically 2, two t to the third minus 48t squared plus 288t. And so we're going to have this minus L of t. And L of t is just this function. So we're going to graph this function, which I have here. And I want to basically see where the zeros are. So I go to analyze graph, find where the zeros are. And I can already see that there's one at zero. I want to see what the second zero is at. So I'm going to have this and then scroll over. My second zero is at about 5.5. .5. I have another zero way out here, but that one's actually going to be at like at like 13.5. So let's try to draw a sketch of this. If I draw a little sketch here, there's a zero at zero, there's a zero at 5.5, and there's a zero at 13.5. The graph looks something like this.
Now, um, so again, we want to see where the zero represents a maximum. So here, since it's positive, that means that n, of, n prime of t or n of t is increasing until here. And since it's negative, it's decreasing here. So the ma a maximum, say a local max, would occur here. Um, so then we could say that the uh, on this interval from 0 to 12, the, the maximum number of shoppers will occur about 5.5 because because um, n prime of t changed from positive to negative here. And that's all there is for this one.